Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear workshop. My name is Pat Bear and I'm here to build uh, some uh, sets. I was about to say Lego sets, but the first thing we're going to do is actually a Mega Constructs. Now, if you've been watching these streams since I started, uh, oh, Harold is hosting. Thank you so much, Harold. Um, uh, hello, board. Uh, board, I sent you a whisper. Uh, it arrived. Uh, I, I tweeted about it. I'm going to have a, um, a video out tomorrow taking a look at the Talk East uh, 3. Uh, hello, Brown Lantern. Um, but yeah, uh, so much to say right off the bat. We're going to wait for a few more folks to join us before we get to building, but I do have things to say. First and foremost, hello, welcome. Secondly, yes, sometime in the new year, when we finish the mega constructs that we're starting today, when we finish the Ninja Go movie uh, Garmadon, uh, yeah, Garmadon, which is this cool, incredibly cool looking shark mech, and also there's a hot dog cart. We got to build that. After that, we build the Endless Waltz Tall Geese 3 Master Grade. This is like a dream kit for me to build. I'm so thrilled. Board picked it up. It's incredibly generous. Thank you so much for that. But we're going to build that kit in the new year, right? This is the last stream, uh, regular build stream of 2018. On Monday, New Year's Eve, I'm going to do my bonus game stream, the monthly sh stream I do where I play games with chat. I decided to do that on New Year's Eve because that would be fun. I thought it'd be kind of cool if people don't want to go out, if they're not into that and they don't have plans, they can hang out with me on Monday night. Ultron, welcome, hello. Um, thanks for joining me. Ultron, we're going to build what you sent me. Here. Go. Here's the thing. A bunch of people sent me kits this month, which is incredible. Thank you so much for your generosity. I really appreciate it. This Gyarados came from Ultron. Hello, Lashbrook. Welcome. Lashbrook, we built a kit from Lashbrook earlier last week. Um, but, yeah, we're going to build uh, – or, yeah, we did it last week and then a little bit on Thursday. Um, but, yeah, I got four kits this month, which is the most I've ever gotten in a single month. So, thank you very much for your generosity. Um uh, my backlog is incredible right now of stuff that I've purchased. Uh, the Garmadon, uh, I really just want to build. I've been waiting on it for a year, and I can't wait to build it. We're going to do the Gyarados. I'm excited about that because Mega Constructs are interesting. They're pretty close to Lego, really. Um, and they have the Pokemon license and do a good job with the Pokemon license. This, this Gyarados we're going to make, it's going to look pretty cool. Uh, one thing I do like about them is... Uh, we'll look at this eye right here. I don't know how it's going to look. Okay, it looks good. Um, the eye is there on the piece. That's not a decal that we applied. It has very few um, of these like decal slash stickers, but they're already on uh, the piece. So we don't have to apply them and try to find the right place and you know have an indent and kind of make it work. They, they do it for you, which is awesome. Uh, I'm very much in favor of that. Uh, I also want to look at, um, this is more see-through because of this light, but I love the bases for these uh, Pokemon. Hello, the Hollow, and welcome. Um, happy to have you here. Uh, this is great. This crew is so good. Uh, we've got some old school. We've got some new school folks in the chat already. We're already at 11. And as many people know, Saturday night is usually our light night. So to have so many people here already is rad um it's this weird thing where we are in the holiday like this weird the holiday middle ground between christmas and new year's uh where people are kind of done doing stuff uh so i totally understand why people are hanging out at home with me which is great um i am going to bring up this here's our overhead shot uh I'm, I'm still really digging the new way I'm doing this camera. I think it's pretty great. I know the whole bag. This is, uh, how many pieces is this? 500 something or other, I think. I can't remember how many pieces this kit is. Um, but it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good size kit. It's a Gyarados there. Um, the holiday taint to quote Doug Benson. Yes. I'm trying not to keep calling it the holiday taint because people will look at you like, what? Because it taint Christmas and it taint New Year's. That's the in-between. Uh, and Board says, uh, I've been so busy with Xmas stuff, so I just wanted to be home tonight. Yeah. I mean, 
Yes, the taint, Ultron. Yeah. Uh, the holiday taint uh, is a thing that I try not to say because people look at you like, what, what, what? What are you saying? Uh, so I nulled the whole container here uh, uh, of all the parts and we'll just pull out what we need. Um, so these are mega constructs. They are, in many ways, these are very similar to Lego, right? The pieces are kind of interesting. There's a lot of custom work because they're doing, because they're not, they're almost exclusively licensed, right? So there's a lot of uh, interesting details here. Like, again, uh, this piece here of the Pokeball could have been a, uh, a sticker, but it's not. It's a custom piece, and that's awesome. But yeah, let's get into it. Let's start building here. I did a little bit here just to warm up my fingers. You know me. I like warming up my fingers. So we're going to pull out the pieces we need. Um, I know by color. I tried to organize it a bit. Uh, it's not perfect, but there are a lot of pieces. Uh, I am excited to work on this kit. This has been on my wish list for quite some time. Uh, this Gyarados. Um, early on... Uh, because the price point is pretty good for some of the smaller sets, uh, we built uh, quite a few of these. I remember it was last Christmas I tried to build two uh, and live stream for my folks' place. So it was uh, actually a year ago, um, but the streaming didn't work. I did not end up doing any streams from my parents. Uh, I th did consider it, but uh, in the end, I decided not to do anything. Uh, oh, Mr. Bob, hello. Welcome. Uh, the most the the actual reason why I didn't end up doing uh, any streams is because I didn't get anything that felt like it was worth talking about on the stream. The one exception is a uh, terrible board game, which I showed off in this video. This um, uh, video there, it's not terrible. It's just a weird game. Um, watch your mouth. Uh, it seems like it's going to be weird. I don't know if I'll ever play it. I definitely don't think I'll play it on stream. But it, it seemed kind of odd. Um, so I don't expect to. Uh, one thing that's kind of neat about these kits is they color code. And you, you probably, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's see if you can see it there. Um, but they color code where the pieces are going to end up when you put them down. Either yellow or red or blue sometimes. Um, and that's very helpful. Uh because a lot of times with Lego, they'll show you what you need, and then they just show you the photo after you've added them. And you kind of have to do the legwork of going, well, where did this go? And then sometimes, if you're me anyway, you miss a step, and you have to go back, and you're like, wait, what piece was that? And when you're just doing one bag at a time, it's easy to figure out those, what, is this supposed to be an extra, or is this supposed to be there? But when you're knolling the whole thing like we did here, you end up sometimes completely missing a step. So I really like that about um, these kits is the, the, the addition of kind of giving you a guide of where things belong. Um, it shows you building it, not it being built. I guess that's a better way of saying it. And I like that. I think it's kind of cool. Um, someday, maybe we'll do uh, Mega Constructs with like Halo or something. That could be kind of cool. Um, all right, so we got our pieces here. We are building our head here. Um, but yeah, uh, we haven't done a mech constructs in a while. I'm sure there's some folks here that have been with us that have never seen these. Um, they're, they're fun. I think the last time we did it is I bought a box that had a bunch of them that was part of, uh, like, I got them at... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Toys R Us before it closed. It's part of like a, uh, the sale. And that was able to buy that. All right, so we're looking for just a, a one by two that doesn't have any extra nonsense on it. Uh, one of the problems of knowing a whole, a whole kit as opposed to going bag by bag is that you end up with a lot of pieces when you start off and you have to find them. Um, but... This They don't do it like, here's bag one. Here's all the parts you need for bag one to complete the set. That That's not what they're about. Uh, so you do kind of need to empty everything on the table. Or you could just like hunt through bags. But one, that's not really fun. I'm not really interested in doing that. And two, that makes a lot of crinkle crinkle noises. 
And I know some people, oh, they hate the crinkle tinkles. Some people love the crinkle tinkles. And some people hate the crinkle tinkles. So I try to avoid those because this is not ASMR. I mean, if you get ASMR, uh, ASMR, ASMR, I don't know why that was hard for me to say right there. If you get those benefits from me uh, or for this stream, more power to you. Uh, good on you. But um, that is not the intent of what we're doing here. All right. So I'm looking for two more of these like pieces. Like I said, uh, you do run into the trouble sometimes of when you have all your pieces there. It's occasionally hard to find them. So we'll assemble that like that. And then kind of build this around. We're working on the head first, which is cool. That's a fun place to start with a kit. And uh, I have noticed that with Mega Constructs, sometimes the pieces uh, take a, a little bit to connect. Uh, occasionally, you'd have to get them just right. There's not as much give as you might find in Lego. Uh, the Hollow says, I've recently learned I get ASMR from people eating crunchy foods like Triscuits. Huh. Interesting. Um, I don't know if I get the Crinkle Tinkles uh, from people doing it. I've, I've, I've watched some videos that are classified as ASMR um, from people who are renowned, known for doing it, and then other people that, like, kept giving it a shot. Um, and I don't think it affects me, per se. I have things that, like, sounds that are pleasing to me, certainly. But I don't know. Uh, one of the cool things here is, okay, so, let's look at this. You can see we're going to uh, attach here these two parts, right? Uh, we're going to attach this and this. And there are uh, five slots here and more than that there. And then they show you upside down which parts go and how it goes. And so where the overlap should be is what I should say. And that the overlap is in the front, which is very nice. Now that took a little, that was a little hard to connect, but it's still good. Uh, <laughs> knobs, pedal, d demos from Brown Lantern. That's your ASMR. It's me of our pumped up feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's like, there's the shivers, that kind of thing. Like, you know, there's sounds that aren't pleasing at all to me. I certainly have that. And I think I have that maybe more than other things. Um, I watched a video the other day of someone like um, putting together a computer and the plastic... You know that plastic you can remove that you want you you always want to take off that satisfying piece where you can get it all in one on a um a glass side panel, and the music was playing and there were a ton of comments on that video of people just being like, "You can't mute the audio when you do that. Don't do that. It's it they're like please." And it was like, "Oh, people really wanted to hear that uh that sound." I really want to like in fully engage with that peel. And I totally get that for me. It's not about the sound of it. It's the physical action of it. Like it's one of my favorite things discovering that like someone hasn't pulled off a thing, pulled off that like plastic and you get to do it. Oh, that rules. Get, that's one of the best parts of getting equipment is taking that off. Doing a nice peel of that really great for me anyway I like it all right so we got some pink here for the mouth and that just goes here okay all right and now we've got again we are going to okay so this is another thing I'll point out how fucking nice this is this is a really nice thing that they did now, if you look at this from a distance, you might not be able to notice. These two pieces are different wedges. They're very similar, but one is a bigger wedge than the other. I think if I do it, if I put them on a piece, you should be able to see it better. So let me do that. And I'll, I'll plop, plop, I'm gonna plop them off. Um, 
let me do this on this. Yeah, that's that's good because I'll be able to get them all. These are different degrees of the wedge. There, you can definitely see that. You can see there's a difference. It's telling me which ones it wants. It wants the shorter ones for this. That's so fucking helpful. It's unbelievably helpful. Like, it's one of those things where, like, maybe Mega Constructs is like, we got to work twice as hard as Lego because people love Pokemon, but, you know, we got to get it out there that we make good Pokemon kits. Uh, and if you are a Pokemon fan, I would recommend these kits. They're they're really great, especially the evolution ones, the ones that are they're smaller on the smaller side, but you're gonna get like three. You're gonna get the whole evolution chain of Pokemon of a Pokemon. I think those are genuinely really cool. Um, but that little touch right there, that little bit of like, these are the ones you want, not those, is so nice. It's so nice to see. All right, so we need that. We need that. We need that gonna do a lot of blue here and then we need these two uh the sound of a lego piece just fitting and snapping in is good oh a snap yes snapping is great um totally i totally understand where you're coming from do and put that there I hope everyone's doing uh, fine tonight. As I said, uh, when we take our break at 10 p.m., uh, I don't know if I said that. This is the last stream of the month, a lot of regular build stream. And what that means is that we're going to do one of my favorite things, which is give away two kits. Two kits that I built here on the stream will go to a subscriber. If you're not currently a subscriber, consider it. $5 a month, or you could use your Twitch coin if you have Twitch Prime. Uh, and it's nothing for you. I get the same uh, credit for either. So it's totally worth it to me if, if you want to use your Twitch coin. Um, you would support the channel. You let me buy stuff, equipment, and kits to build. Um, and so, yeah, consider that. And like I said, once a month, I draw a name. And this month, they're going to win the Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Krillin. So two Dragon Ball model kits. They're really fun. They're I think they're super poseable and great. Uh, they come with cool like uh, uh, beams and stuff for their for the, like Kamehameha and that kind of thing. Um, Destructo disc. And I think they're like if you looked at them you'd go oh that's a cool action figure. And I don't know if you would know for sure that it's uh, a model kit. Uh, hey, it's Johnny, uh, Smash Mouth. Uh, I'm not sticking around. Just wanted to drop in and wish everyone a good evening. Well, thank you very much for popping in. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to everybody who's uh, joined me uh, tonight watching the stream. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, we are building this Gyarados, which is cool. And I don't think a lot of people do Mega Constructs that often. So it's kind of nice to be able to show this off. I'm happy to have so many people hanging out tonight. I really appreciate that. Um, we will later talk about anime. Like I said, we will draw a name of a subscriber. And they will win two model kits that I will send out in the new year. Because, of course, I uh, can't really get to the post office. Um, but yeah, uh, I want to thank everybody for, for hanging out tonight. Uh, I really did miss this. I, I didn't do as many bonus streams this month as I did in November. I am going to try to do that in January more. It's just with traveling, it was hard to find time. But I do want to do that because I really like, you know, playing games and having people hang out and watch. Uh, that's not, you know, the primary focus of this channel, but it's nice to do. And we'll play games on Monday at my uh, countdown to the new year. Start at 9 p.m. Eastern, go till... Uh, it is the new year here in the East Coast, which I think will be pretty fun. Um, all right, so that goes here. Great. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Da -da, and got to find another wedge. Wedge piece. Like I said, this all works until it doesn't. And then you're like, oh, where are they? These are the two bigger wedge pieces there because we know we use the other ones, so we don't need that. Uh, it's a busy month. It is the hollow. It is certainly a busy month. I think it's uh, a lot going on, and it was hard to yeah find the extra time. I think January I'll have more time. Um, 
to do some bonus streams and hang out. And then, of course, uh, I am hoping to get to three streams a month with my Patreon. I'm $20 away from being able to unlock a third weekly stream. Uh, and I'm excited about that. Uh, once again, uh, here are... These are not stickers. These are just done, which is kind of neat because you would imagine them in other cases, those would be stickers or decals, and they're not. And I think that's very cool. And then that goes like that. That goes like that. We're just working on the mouth of our Gyarados. Gyarados. And of course, we're doing it upside down, which is weird. Two fangs. And I'm going to try to be very careful not to drop any pieces because unlike Lego, the one thing Lego certainly has an advantage of, among many things, is that they always have extra pieces for things. And we got these uh, whiskers here, which are rubber. These are rubber. Little rubber things. You can see there's a lot of movement to them. Uh, but one seems a little thicker than the other. I don't think that's on purpose. I think that's a, uh, a mistake. But um, they still have a lot of give to them, and they'll still have some movement, which is fun. It's a cool little little bit of business there. Uh, Asmo said, uh, Twitch Prime was being weird, so I had to just finally subscribe with real money. Glad to do so. Well, Asmo, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm sorry that that's been weird. Um, the Hollow says... Uh, also, I thought the GB Game of the Year podcast and guest lists were great this year. I agree with you. Uh, Harold is still on day two. Um, I am on the final day. Uh, I was able to keep up because earlier in the week I didn't have a lot going on, so I was able to keep up, but I am on the final one. Um, and I'm happy about that. I, I think the only thing that bums me out is at some point, Brad spoiled, who, and I won't say it in case you're very behind. Brad, in one of the deliberations, spoils who won uh, Mario Party. And that bummed me out because I hadn't watched that yet. So that was annoying. It, it was, still didn't uh, take away from my enjoyment of it, but it was annoying. And of course, like, I, you know, I think the guest lists were incredible this year. Um, some really cool folks uh, jumped in on that. And I thought that was really, really neat. And, you know, I'm really happy I got to do it. Uh, GB year-end content gets me to buy Moonlighter. Um, thankfully, it's been slow at work, so I've finished off all video content and do a lot of reading now. Oh, well, that's good. Um, I mean, for me, it's that thing of I, uh, I played Florence. And I wish that I had played Florence before my list went in. Like, I don't know what game would have not made the cut, but a game would have not made the cut if I had played Florence before uh, my list was due. Because, uh, and they explain it and they talk about it on the show, so I'm not going to get into too much, but Florence is fucking really good and really affecting. Um, it's a mobile game that I would say, don't be like, Play, like, sit down in a comfy chair and just play it. Like, don't travel with it. I think that's that's not it's not a road it's not a road game even if it's a mobile game. I think like you know, take some time. It's really something special, and I wish I had played it uh, before my list because it it definitely would have made a list. It's definitely a game that would have would have found its way on there. Um, uh. Oh, yeah. It's so nice that Drew was able to do that. Yeah, well, Harold, I, I agree with you. Um, one thing I did want to say in conversations with folks, um, uh, Harold said, uh, kudos to Abby, Abby Russell, uh, for bringing up treatment of women in God of War. That's why Giant Bomb needs her and other guys would have brought it up. So, the one thing I do want to say is, uh, some folks said that, you know, and then uh, a counterpoint. One, I do agree with her. And two, a counterpoint that some people made is that she didn't have any issue with uh, some of the incredibly terrible racist portrayals and racial tones of Detroit become human. Because it's not her job to do that. And it's also not Jan's job to pipe in and be 
uh, the minority male of the group and talk about that. And it's nobody's job to represent and to do that work. It's actually everyone's job. So I don't think you can leave it alone with saying none of the guys would have said anything because there are times. And it, it does affect people differently. Like, it's actually surprising to me that Vinny didn't see any of it, and it didn't affect him at all. And I think one could say maybe it's because the father-son stuff hit him pretty hard that he didn't say it. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, Abby's going to get shit for saying things that people don't want to hear. And Alex would get less shit for saying it than Abby would. And that's just the way things are, unfortunately. In the same way that... Uh, a game no one fucking talked about, right? When South Park came out, it made total sense that the GB crew didn't really spend any time on it and didn't give a shit about the game, right? But Austin got shit forever for being visibly upset about it during E3. And he just got shit for it, like in chat and for a year. And it's that thing where it's like, Yeah, Brown Lancer says it reminds me in the same way that people would say that Austin is trying to sound smart. Like, it wouldn't be weird for any of them to just be like, God, I know that it's been in the cartoon for a long time, but the coon fucking sucks. It is problematic and awful and terrible. And just because it's been on TV for a while doesn't give it a pass for not being garbage. And I think that's like, totally reasonable to call that out uh and in the same way looking at the fact that it's like yeah they didn't god of war has never treated women in any way shape, or form well in any way and all the advances it's made in its storytelling if you want to look at that that way which some people do some people really like it uh and really like this god of war i didn't play it I'm only going off what people have said about it and what I've watched footage of it. Uh, I don't have personal, personal experience with it. But from what I've seen of it and what people have talked about, it's like I do not doubt that it is that they haven't gotten past that. And that's a bummer. And it's also certainly a bummer that people can't give Abby slack for fucking talking about a thing that they don't want to think about. That's the fucking bummer. Um, I mean, I'm not... Yeah. And that's the real thing. That I think that some people get a pass on this and some people don't get a pass on this. And it's very frustrating because nobody... Uh, that... Being critical of something... Is not the same thing as disliking something. Straight up, full full stop. That's that's how it goes. You can be critical of things, and still take enjoyment of in them. You know, I think that that's what good criticism is. It's not dumping on something. It's not taking the piss out of something. It's going, this could be better. Here's what I'm bummed about it. Like, the first and the new line of Deus Ex had some fucking racist shit in it. I still really like that Deus Ex, but it had some racist shit, and it should have thought about that. And it's a fucking bummer that it didn't. Uh, so I gave it even less when they were doing All Lives Matter. I, I had even less like willingness to hear them out about that shit because I was like nah y'all didn't earn that did not earn that 100% did not earn that shit uh, I like Spock for a while and generally uh, but generally it was the less mean comedy yeah I mean like I think there's the hollow I think they're there's this weird thing where um, at a certain point, pretty early on, 
uh, Matt and Trey realized that no, like giving it to both sides was the thing that they were going to double down on. And that's an approach. Like, I think smug is interesting. I think that's an interesting episode. Uh, I think it's pretty telling uh, and pretty interesting that there's a whole episode around uh, helping whales. That's like a PETA thing that ends up with a whale on the moon. Like, like that's like, yeah, you know, like sometimes you really think you're helping and in fact you are hurting so much. Like, you know, fair criticism on that. But uh, for the most part, sometimes it just feels like, hey, this is funny. And if you don't like it, tough shit. And I'm not a big fan of that style of comedy. Um, never, never have been. Maybe I'll, maybe my taste will change, but I don't know. Like, there's something to be said for uh, um, there's something. Something to be said for, like, you know, like, being honest and, and earnest about what's going on in the world and and saying, like, you know, like, hey, let's let's take the piss out of this thing. Um, like, let's call the one black character in our show Token, which is a real fucking thing. It, tokenism is a thing. And there's something interesting about just calling that out and being earnest about that or straightforward about that, not earnest, straightforward. There's something interesting about that. Now, what you do with it, as opposed to just the fact that token is literally a token, that sucks. That's not a fun take on it. That's literally just doing like, oh, we call him token because... He's the black character. We don't do anything with that. Ha, uh, ta-da. No thanks. Not really interested in that style of engagement uh, with real issues. There is, like I said, there is something there that's interesting. There's something there that with meat on it. But I don't think they're ever interested in engaging with meat. Uh, cynical libertarianism. Yeah, I, I don't I don't tend to disagree with that. I didn't think we'd be talking about South Park tonight, but hey, I never I never steer the conversations other than the fact that I want to talk about anime and we always talk about anime. Um, but yeah. Uh, but I, I did want to go back to my point, which is like. A thing that I've been trying to do my best in is not only be a voice, uh, is to not only champion voices uh, that are not mine as a way to uh, allow people to check in with stuff that they might not otherwise engage in, because I think that's very important. Oop, I fucked this up, so I got to fix this. Move these back. Because um, I, I do think that's super important is to is to engage with things. Um, but also, like, if I have a platform, if I have a loud mouth, then I owe it to use that platform, to use my loud mouth, to take some pressure off people who part of their lives have to be educating other people. Uh Yeah, Asmo, I've really engaged in the Hope Punk uh, stuff that, that was coming around today. Um, but my big thing, like I said, is that it is, is my opinion, and, I, um, and I, I do, you know, stand by my opinion that, uh, like, it's not Jan or Abby's job to educate a bunch of straight white males. It ain't their jobs. You know, like, if they're passionate about it, 
if they want to talk about it, great. Um, you know, like if Jan wants to take his moment to talk about Pokemon Go, I want him to take his moment to talk about Pokemon Go. If he wants to take his moment and talk about the many, many ways that like certain games have failed people of color, uh, then I think he can. Uh, I think it's awesome that Abby decided to chat about um, some of the changes that Sims 4 has made as far as like a sec a a accessibility and inclusion. Because that's stuff I don't know about. And it's fucking awesome to hear people talk about that. Because uh, I don't play Sims 4. So I didn't know that they've like worked on hair um uh there was there was a game that came out this year that a uh someone i follow on twitter was like oh um the new avatars the new avatars for xbox uh my friend dj was talking about how like he th he made himself in the in in the avatars and how happy he was to see himself like the many many different uh, things that have changed since the last round of avatars and how he was like, this is me. And like that fucking rules. My me that I made years ago looks like me. It's got my facial hair. It's got my eyes. It's got my glasses. It's me. It's not hard to make me and in, in, in that kind of thing. But it's been tough for DJ to make himself. And I think that's awesome. I'm always going to be supportive of that. Like that rules that people like took the time and effort to make sure that more people could see themselves in games. Uh, yeah, no, I think board. I totally agree with you. I think that like, you know, even down to it's, it's always to me anyway, like, interesting to hear what you know people who love games that I don't love what they think of things like that or games that I do love you know like that stuff is is interesting you know the comics that meant a lot to people this year that didn't mean to me uh the fact that uh Lena Rain uh our list of top anime this year has one thing in common I put my list up on Twitter. She put her list up on Twitter. I took a look at it. We have one. We, we share like one thing in common on that list, which is laid back camp, which rules. And of course, her list wasn't just anime that came out this year. But still, she found she liked stuff I didn't like. I liked stuff she didn't like. And it's like it's a cool thing where I'm like, oh, neat. I'm going to check out some of this. Uh, it's like that's incredible and I'm so happy to have that you know uh it's so nice when when you can like you know and that's obviously like you know I like to think that sometimes I can approach things in that way I, I haven't always been that version of me I'm a better version of me than I was in the past uh certainly but like I don't know last year my game of the year was PUBG I don't like shooters, generally. I don't play a lot of shooters. I didn't play Call of Duty this year. Uh, I've tried Fortnite and don't really like it. Um, it's not it's not my genre. I've never played Siege. It's just not my thing. But I gave PUBG a chance because a lot of people that I knew really, that really, really liked it, I got in early. I really liked PUBG. I engaged with it a lot. I watched a lot of people play it, and I played a lot of it. Uh, I don't know if I would have done that six years ago. Tried out a genre I didn't really like and find out it was my game of the year. You know, I don't do a lot of shooting when I play Hitman. Because it's just not the thing that I like about Hitman. I do a lot of stealth in Hitman. Also, I don't like stealth games. But I really liked Hitman, and I really liked Hitman too. I don't know. I don't know what to say about him. Like, I'm, I'm always pleasantly surprised when I can find something in a genre that I didn't know I would like. 
Uh, I think it's, life is way more interesting that way. And I guess the point I'll end on that with is, even if you don't agree with someone, when you hear passion, genuine passion in their voice, like, give yourself the, the opportunity and the challenge. And I mean this from, this is advice for myself as well. To go, okay, okay, and like, listen, and it's fucking hard. You know, like, yeah, uh, well, well, thank you very much, Brown. Um, but I, th I think that there's like a lot that can be learned for just going, just like taking a breath and taking a, a second to think about like, okay, I don't know. Uh, yes, uh, I did, uh, uh, uh. Van de Vede Venter Dan Dan. I'm gonna say Dan. Uh, I did make a uh, game uh, list. Um, I'm gonna link it in the in, in when we take our break, but I'll do it right now too. Uh, it'll be in the show description here, folks. You're watching later on YouTube. Uh, but I did do a top ten games list. I put it there. I, I went out. Uh, it went out on Monday, so it might have gotten a little lost. I mean, I'm like you know, I'm no Casey Malone. I'm no Mike Drucker. Uh, when it comes to like you know the comedy stuff. I really did appreciate that Casey, in, in Casey's list, he says, I'm not Pat Bear, <laughs> which I thought was very funny. Uh, especially because at PAX Unplugged, someone did go, hey, are you Casey Malone? And I was like, no. But I get why you thought I was. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that, like, I, I do like listening to, to podcasts and, and reading the analytics. I get a lot out of like, like Nina Freeman is gonna is going to be championing games that I've never fucking heard of. Nina's list is great to look at, even if you don't want to play games on that list. I was happy because uh, because of my list, some people tried Butterfly Soup last year. That was the game that I really wanted people to try. Um, especially folks that like Dream Daddy and maybe didn't have a lot of experience in that genre. Uh, I wanted people to really check out Butterfly Soup, and I recommend it uh, to you as well, folks, because um, I think it's a very awesome, awesome uh, visual novel game. Um, and I really do love it. So that, to me, was uh, really fun for, for people to check out. This year... Like, I think uh, A Frog Detective Story is really great. Um, I think House Flipper. House Flipper and Donut County are my number two and my number one, respectively, game games. And to me, they mean the world of just, like, being a very relaxing game. I, I like, spent a lot of time, like, loving those games. Donut County was, like... It's like I, I found the writing clever and fun and I have a low tolerance for for bullshit writing. I thought it was awesome. House Slipper, I turned their classical music license, you know, whatever. Turn that down. Harold says Dota County was so good. And I totally agree. House Slipper for me was a meditation game. It was turn on a podcast, turn the audio down or in my other, because I have two monitors, have my other monitor going, catch up on some whatever, uh, and just play. Oberdin is incredible. The thing with Oberdin is, other folks are going to champion Oberdin. I don't have to do the work to tell you to play Oberdin. That's why I'm bummed that I didn't try Florence. Um, because I would have loved to have been able to champion Florence, because I think it's really great. Um, uh, I think that there's like it says something really interesting. Um, and I think it's like, it feels like an art game, but an art game I could recommend to people that play games a lot, which most of the time, honestly, when you're talking about art games, art games for or games that are classified kind of as art games are, are a lot of time, honestly, way more appreciated by people that don't play games that often they find a lot to like about that kind of genre, those experiences. 
and you don't get it as much from people who play a lot of games, you know? So I'm hopeful that people check Florence out. And that's always more interesting to me than big budget games, which you may have noticed. I don't really play a lot of big budget games. I play some. I mean, like I said, Hitman has been on my Hitman's on my list. Pokemon Go is on my list. Like, I'm playing games that people play or played at least. You know, I didn't play a lot of console games. My roommate owns a bunch of consoles. I didn't touch them this year. Uh, so I can't really talk about a lot of those. You know, I play mostly PC games. And I play a lot of games, you know, I get for, for on sale or whatever. Um, my Let Pat Play that I'm going to put out on Monday is a game that is pay what you want. That's really cool and weird. Um, I won't say the name of it. Because you gotta, you know, if you're a patron, patron on my Patreon, you can watch it tomorrow. And other everyone else got to watch it on Monday. But, like, I played a game that's really fun, and I'm excited, and it didn't cost any money. And you know, I went back after I played it and, and tipped them. Because I was like, oh, this is totally worth a couple bucks. It's totally worth a few dollars to say, thank you for making this. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm generally more interested in kind of cool short experiences like that. Uh, no spoilers, but Vinny speaks pretty highly and impactfully about, uh, Florence. I'm hoping, uh, that brings people in. Yeah, Asmo, I mean, that brought me in, right? It was on my radar. I just didn't play it. And then Vinny talking about it and how the game, you know, affected him so much, uh, and Ben as well. Uh, it was like, okay, that's enough. That, that, that's all I really need is, is that. That passion is clearly there, and I have no problem checking it out based on that passion. Sounds good to me. And I am, as I said, happy I played it. I wish I'd played it sooner. Uh, I finally played Assassin's Creed Unity earlier this year. I ended up enjoying it. I guess a lot of the problems got patched out before I got to it. Well, that's nice. You know, if that's, that is a, a benefit of playing games late is, uh, you know, you get a lot of the, the, sometimes you get a lot of the patches out, you know. In a couple years when I finally play Fallout 76, it will be interesting to uh, see what that game is. I, um... But yeah, I uh, I hope people check out some of those games. Like I said, check out like Nina. Check out people that play interesting things. You know, like yeah, it's cool to see what um, Xavier Woods and Kenny Omega play. That's fucking cool to see what games that are on their list, right? That I I totally think that's awesome. I love seeing that. But I think some of the more interesting creative people uh, out there that are like games creators, like I'm always interested in whatever the fuck they heard about that I never did. That's the stuff I'll be playing in January when I have time. Yeah, and like sweary. Yeah, I mean like it's interesting to see what he uh, what is interesting to him, what appealed to him, you know, like it's cool to see what the indie scene is like, you know, if you're playing a lot of, you know, various indies from various countries. Like, that's fucking cool. All right, so these are the long ones. Got to do some spikes here. I don't know. I'm always interested in checking out stuff like that and seeing what people have to say. You know, like things that I have never heard of. I think that's pretty cool. I hope some people checked out. Uh, I'm one of the few folks that put on their list they, a thing that is not a game. Uh, Harold says hoot. Hoot indeed. Uh, but yeah, I, I put uh, uh, Monster Girl Maker. That's an app. But I really liked it. So I wanted to put it on the list. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen Lena's list yet. I know that a couple people did like 
more um, soundtrack kind of things. And I think that's cool. I just haven't uh, had time. I haven't read all the lists, you know. That is, like I said, a, a thing that I often do in January is try to engage with those lists. Oops, I pushed these in too much. Pull them out some. Great. Uh, I like that some of the lists are starting to get further away from top 10 listicles. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, Dia, I, I saw that. I thought that was cool. I'm the only person that put Donut County at the top of my of their list, though. I saw that. It was on the list, certainly, but I'm the only person that made their number one. And I get that. But yeah, I mean, I'd also want to read people's passionate opinions about Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is not a thing that I... I didn't play Monster Hunter World. I've never been interested in Monster Hunter. But it's kind of cool to have uh, people talk about it. And it's cool to read about what people had to say about it. I think those are like those kind of lists are it's fascinating, right? Because it's just like not a thing. I I want to know what Casey Malone thinks about Magic the Gathering Arena. I totally want to fucking hear his opinion on it. I'd also like to hear someone who's like, I don't really play card games, but I want to get this shot and holy shit. Like I like hearing about that too. I think that's awesome. Um, I think both those are cool, you know, like both those sides of, of the opinions are, are really valid and important. Um, I bought Celeste, uh, yeah, um, well, I bought Donut County on PC without seeing that it was on Switch. Oh yeah, Mr. Bob, yeah, um, it's on iOS and yeah, it comes with a sticker pack, that's right, um, I've had some unique game of the years. Uh, Sonic Mania. Yeah, I think Sonic Mania. I totally can see that. Harold, I think Rock Band Blitz was really interesting. I'm really glad they made that game. I think that, like, historians of the... of that... of... of the history of Rock Band, you know, like, for a lot of people, it was a cool use of that game. I wish it had been supported more. Um... I think they tried very hard to to make a go of that game, but it just never picked up any steam, which is a shame because I think it's a really interesting uh, game. Uh, I mean, I had fun with it. So I could see that being there. Uh, yeah, I, I really did like... Uh, uh, Dia's list. I think that, yeah, there's some, there's always some fun lists. It's always kind of cool. I like people that are like, uh, I did a thing. I don't know. I wanted to try it out. Uh, um, you know, I, I like when people are, are kind of look at it a little differently, like, or Rich, you know, was for years doing his mobile games because that's the world that he was working exclusively in. So Rich Gallup is going to talk about mobile games because that's his thing. And I know there are a lot of people who are like, I really look forward to Rich's uh, mobile game stuff because it's the mobile games I'll be playing the next couple months. Like there were a lot of people out there that were really into that. Um, I'd like to think that people check out my list for a couple games that they've never heard of. Uh, and a couple surprises, you know. That always makes me happy when, when people, like, say that, you know, I hope people check out, like, as a person that's terrible at precision platformers, I love Celeste. And so I hope a few people that aren't great at precision platformers give Celeste a chance because of my recommendation. That would be neat. I think that would be really cool. Or at least just download the soundtrack. If they check out the soundtrack, that would be great, too. Um, all right, so we're doing the, the same things here and there. We're building our, because this is a, we're building a dragon. As you can see in the photos, that's a dragon. Uh, uh, I feel bad that I haven't been using my PC lately to play games a lot. This year has been mostly mobile switching PS4. I mean, that's what happens, you know. 
Mr. Bob, I totally understand if you're not into um, to platformers, uh, especially a, a kind of a punishing game like that. Um, I think the story is way more than it ever needed to be, and I'm I'm I love it. Uh, I was so pleasantly surprised by the detail and thought that was put into that. Um, that uh, I got over even the parts, and in the assist mode certainly helped. But I got over the parts that kind of bugged me about it, right? Um, same way Hitman. Like, with Hitman, I'm just trying to survive, right? Trying to get out of the stage as quickly, as, as easily as possible. I'm never trying to silent assassin. I'm not great in professional mode. I'm just playing that game as best I can and just trying to survive uh, and exit the level. That's like how I play that game. Um, I know other people can be real, uh, can do some real cool things in that world, but I'm just about getting the job done. Accidental deaths, a lot of pushing, a lot of uh, trying to shoot someone from far away and then running, a lot of throwing a duck and getting a few casualties along the way, a lot of duck kills. A lot of briefcase knockouts in, in in Hitman 2 for me. Because that briefcase, if you're tracking that briefcase right, it can go around corners. That doesn't make any sense, but I love it. I love that so much. I think that's so terrible and uh, weird, but I love that. I love cheesing that so much. All right, so we're almost done with these sections here. Well, in a, in a minute, we will take a break here. I will talk about ways you can support the stream. I will pick the winner of uh, my um, uh, two model kits. It will be a subscriber. So this is a good time to say, if you're not currently a subscriber, now's a great time to get on board because you could win a uh, blue uh, Super Saiyan Blue Goku and a Krillin model kits that I built. Uh, they're action figure model kits. Um I'm going to send both of them out in the new year to a subscriber. So now's a great time to get on board and renew your subscription. Remember, if you use Twitch Prime, you use your token with me. Uh, you have to. It doesn't auto renew. You have to manually renew it. So if that's a thing you haven't done yet, now's a good time to do that because I will be pulling that name soon. I don't know why this one's giving me trouble. All the other ones we're doing. Uh, just fine. Um, yeah, I played Celeste. Uh, I was staying away from Celeste. And, uh, yeah. Oh, bunch of people. Uh, Brown Lantern just subscribed. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that is because Harold gifted a tier one to Brown Lantern. Um, they've given away two subs. Thank you so much, Harold, for that. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Um, now Brown Lantern is eligible. Uh, Thank you, Harold. That's very generous of you. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to pull the list, and then I'll pull a name. Um, it's past the time, but the unification day was today. Oh. Um, I'm going to jump back here. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, let's throw the Bear Cave emote in the chat and say thank you to Harold. Uh, for gifting. That's so nice of y'all. We had two on Thursday, two gifts on Thursday. We got one today. That rules. Um, yeah, I think that, I mean, it's not for everyone, uh, but I think Celeste is awesome. Uh, but also, if you want to watch some Let's Plays of Celeste, watch some Let's Plays of Celeste. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, I think, or if you wanted to be, uh, if you want to do the thing of buy the game and then watch Let's Plays, like, I think that's okay too. I definitely want to support them because I think the game is, uh, awesome, but I understand if it's not your game, it's not your game. All right, so we're going to take a break here. I'm going to talk about ways you can support the channel. Then we're going to do our giveaway. So I can give time for uh, to get uh, my the messages here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really. 
Um, I really like it. So, okay, here we go. First and foremost, if you're not currently a subscriber, consider subscribing. You can use your Twitch coin. You can use real money. Uh, you can cheer. That's awesome. Thank you very much for the cheer. I appreciate that. Those things are all great ways to support the channel. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can always join my Patreon. Uh, any video I make, everything from the mailbag videos to my Let's Play uh, to a new series I'm debuting in January. I don't know exactly when that's going to be, but I am doing a new series in January, um, uh, which is a, a bit more of a pure comedy thing. It's not a streaming thing. It's a video series that I'll be doing in January. They'll, uh, those videos, for $5 a month, you get those early. When I hit $150 at Patreon, uh, I will start streaming three times a week for builds. That's coming up. Amazon wishlist. This Gyarados was bought on my Amazon wishlist, as was several other kits this month. We got four kits built, uh, bought this month, which is incredible. Thank you so much for that. If you don't see something on there you think you'd love to see me build, let me know. I'm, uh, I'll put it on the wish list. Or if you see something and it doesn't have Amazon Prime shipping, wait a little while. Sometimes things go back and forth and they, they go off and then they come back because other sellers start doing it. Um, Harold, thank you all very much for that cheer. I also really appreciate that. Bits and cheers, super helpful because they get me closer to the payouts that Twitch provides. Anything I make from Twitch or Patreon or my coffee, which I'm going to link right here, um, goes into me buying more kits. So all that stuff goes back into the channel. Uh, I have a good backlog going into next month, which means that in January, I shouldn't have to buy any kits, which is great because it means that I can maybe work on a thing that I've been wanting to work on, which is redoing my lighting. Instead of having these two lamps here, I'm thinking of trying to do something that I've been watching YouTube videos about and like make a contraption to blanket the, the lights in a, in a general lighting sense instead of having one here and one over here, uh, one there and one there, and just do something across. I'm looking at that to make my green screen more stable. That's what I'm looking at right now. Um, I'm also looking at a better way to hang my green screen because uh, right now it's not working exactly how I'd like it. So I'm looking into new ways of doing that. I have a few ideas, um, but I'm looking at that in the new year. Um, so yeah, those are those are just some things that are ways to support me. I want to thank you all, uh, those who are watching now. Um, someone renewed their subscription uh, and the message didn't pop up, but they renewed. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it says that, you know, like, let me know. Uh, the Build With Bear community is my Discord. Um, I post photos of my build stuff. People promote themselves. So if you like people who are in here, uh, you know, Harold streams consistently. Some folks stream now and again. Um, you can check out links. People post links in there, and you can follow those links and, and, and check them out. Harold is another great person that you can follow. Uh, you should give them a follow and check out their channel. Um, and, and check out, uh, Harold streams. That's, uh, H-Bomb and friends in the chat. Obviously, Harold is a longtime supporter here. Uh, he more than earned that VIP, um, badge there. Uh, and then the other person I'll say is, don't watch her when I'm streaming. Watch me when I'm streaming. But when I'm not streaming, you can watch, uh, twitch.tv slash Kate. Kate Stark rules. Her chat is incredible. Uh, they're lovely people. They're a little cautious about new folks because they're very protective of Kate. Um, but if you like, uh, if you like what I do, uh, Kate is incredible, and I highly recommend checking Kate out. Um, also, I've mentioned before I'm going to put in here. Here's my top ten list. If you haven't read it yet, for Giant Bomb, that's a cool thing you could do. And then uh, I have a show in January. I'm doing a show. It's not my show. It's Mike Drucker's show. It's called Shit Arcade. It's January 18th, which is a Friday night, 10 p.m. in Brooklyn. Will not be filmed. If you're in the New York area, you know, you're in the Jersey area, uh, come check out uh, Shit Arcade. It is um, comedians and gaming personalities play bad video games, old bad video games. Um and occasionally games that are bad, but we still like, you know. Um, I'm grateful I get to do it. Uh, 
Uh, Gita Jackson is going to be doing it as well. I've never met Gita. I'm very excited to meet her. Um, and uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yes. Um, yeah, Shit Arcade is going to be Friday, January 18th at 10 p.m. Uh, it's a Friday night, and it's my first show. I know I'm definitely doing in New York, and I don't do a lot of shows these days. Uh, I mostly do streams and then, you know, conventions, so I am promoting it early. Also, the weekend before, Mike is doing San Francisco Sketch Fest, and so I know he's going to be promoting that a lot, and he might not really be promoting the one he's doing the next week in New York, so I'm trying to really promote it among people that would be want to check it out. Uh, it's a very fun show. I've been to the last two, uh, and I'm excited that he asked me to do this one. Um, let's see. All right, now's the time, because we're going to talk anime in the second half. So let me download this. Uh, I've got a uh, random number generator here. I use Google's random number generator. Uh, I know my class is starting the 14th, but I can try to come after class. It depends on how bad traffic for Jersey will be that day. Well, Brown Lantern, if you can come, that would be great. Um, it's a, it, you know... Uh, it's a fun show. Drucker gets some, like, you're going to meet a couple comedians that you don't know. Like, Roy Wood Jr. is just like a class act, fucking funny ass dude. Uh, Kate Hannigan, Katie Hannigan is hysterical and great and weird. Like, there's some good people that are doing it, um, that I think you'll like. Um, and Anthony Tamek's doing it. My buddy Anthony, I've known him for 10, 12 years. Uh, Anthony uh, was Trump on the President Show on Comedy Central, um, and is a great comedian and a lover of video games. So, Board picked up Celeste for Switch. I think that's awesome. Uh, so that show's gonna be cool. All right, so I've got what I need here. Um, we've got some names to pull. Blah blah blah. Clicking. So winning. Super Saiyan God Goku. And, which is blue, and Krillin is going to be cross check. Last Brook, Last Brook wins. Hell, Last Brook, uh, congratulations. Um, I am going to uh, whisper you. Uh, it's a Super Saiyan blue. It's not the red go go uh, go. Uh, it's I put God, but it is blue. It's Super Saiyan blue Goku. Congrats, Last Brook. Um, forget if you, yeah, so last week I'm going to message you, uh, and then next week, once the mail comes back, I will mail that out to you, uh, because as you may know, uh, trying to mail things on Monday and Tuesday, that's not going to work. So, um, but yeah, congratulations last Brook. I will send you a whisper. Uh, we got that in. I'm going to drink a little water. We'll get back to building our Gyarados. Um, which is fun because, uh, last Brook actually, you know, sent us, um, on a perfect cell. So we get to send back. So it's, yeah, there's super is weird because super Saiyan God is this redhead thing. And then blue is their version of that which is different, but the same, but different. And then there's also, you know, the Goku's body, which also has the God in it. And, the, and then he gets, he's pink. And I don't know. It's all weird. All of it. I mean, it's, it's made up nonsense, but it's still like, all right, hey, figure this out, gang. It's the blue. It's Super Saiyan blue. Super Saiyan God is a thing you can only achieve by counting four Saiyans. Yeah, it's that thing of like, God is different. Basically, they saw what the powers of God were and are like, well, we can get like that without doing all this shit. And then there's also like, yeah, it's all different and all nonsense. And it's good. It's all good nonsense. Oh, I got to go back to the overhead. Back to Gyarados. So we got some pieces for our Gyarados here. We're building a new thing over here. So let's get that together. It's a lot of non-supers. I mean, it's, it's Dragon Ball. It's nonsense. But Super's a lot of nonsense. Okay, so... 
this goes like this, I believe. Um, yeah, I think it goes like that. Uh, Alter Instinct, which is different. <laughs> yes. And there's the Gods of Destruction, which is a different thing. And then there's the character who's basically already, a, he's more powerful than the Gods of Destruction. That's not Goku. Or Vegeta. That's a different guy. Because they're not maybe more powerful, but they might be. But Goku probably is. Because the thing about fucking Goku is that Goku gets stronger when he's psyched about fighting. That's why he couldn't beat heart disease. But he could. He can beat just about everybody else. But yeah. If heart, if heart disease, if heart disease, if heart disease powered up and talked a lot of trash, Goku would be better at fighting it. Uh, they figured out how to go God by themselves. Yeah, it's like their other. Uh, I've been watching Dragon Ball and just got the first appearance of the Red Ribbon Army. Oh, Mr. Bob, I've been meaning to do a Dragon Ball rewatch. I love that show so much. Uh, it's such a fun, silly, great adventure series. Uh, all right, so put that on there. And then goes on that one side. And then, okay. All right, yeah, I love that show so much. Uh, shout out to Zamasu, who is a god from another universe that loses the Goku in a sparring match, gets so angry he wishes for Goku's body, then attempts to destroy all the universes. Yeah. I love a good shit heel heel, like villain. Like, that's a great... Most of the time, Dragon Ball's villains are... I'm very strong. I'm going to... And I'm going to use that strength to fight people and take over the world. And then sometimes there's a villain who's just like, I'm going to ruin everything. I'm going to use my cunning and I'm going to use my wits and I'm going to use the Dragon Ball's right for evil and I'm going to fucking make this shit happen. Uh, I'm going to be fucked up and evil. Uh, you know, there's something to be said for that. It's not, you know, not that I agree with it, but like, it's interesting sometimes. Like a good villain like that is pretty cool sometimes. Um, I did not realize how long they had been without the moon and then there were characters trapped on it uh, when it was blown up. Yes. Yes, Mr. Bob. When they blew up the moon, they were motherfuckers up there. And uh, apparently... For quite some time, Akira Toriyama forgot about that. Here's the thing about Akira Toriyama. Sometimes he forgets about the bullshit lore. And we think about it. I came back uh, to hear I am strong and I'm going to fight people and thought, heck yeah, Pat. Um, uh, the only thing about OG Dragon Ball is when Goku goes full Trump and pussy tats Balma. And that is just weird to watch, man. Yes, Brown Lantern. Brown Lantern. Even for its time, it's cheeky. It What it considers to be cheeky is not cool. There's a lot about Goku doesn't understand the difference between men and women. That sucks. The whole, like, stealing Bulma's panties reveal. Uh, and he show and, you know, and then he ends up, she ends up flashing, like, the idea of uh, Master Roshi becoming tiny so he can, like, spy on women. Like, there's a lot about Master Roshi that's like, y'all need him to leave. You gotta go. I'm glad he made you stronger, but, like, hey, someone needs to have a fucking talk with this fucking old man. Uh, it wasn't great then. Some of it does certainly does not hold up. And I didn't even see, you know, the dub takes away a lot of that. Um... Uh, I think Jackie Chan is very great. 
Uh, Master Roshi was... Uh, there's a lot about Master Roshi that is pure garbage. Um, uh, but there was there was an element of Dragon Ball that was like... Fucking not cool. And that's a, a large part of it. Um, I think he does the tap to Chi Chi as well. Um, because he cannot tell if young Chi Chi is a girl or not. And that sucks too. Um, Mr. Bob, I think we... Yeah. I, I certainly did it, you know, think about Mr. Roshi in those terms then. He's just, he, he is the archetype of the dirty old man character, which is an archetype, but it does indeed suck ass. It sucks a lot, and I don't, yeah, I'm not a fan of it. I think he has a big redeeming arc in Super. I think the idea that he's, like, serious, and he's going to, like, take things seriously is interesting. Um... Uh, I appre I can appreciate that that he has somewhat of a redeeming arc in Dragon Ball Super, um, and I'm happy that he has that arc. But like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I think the f the they did take out a lot. I think if you watch the dubs, or especially the dub, then there is you know things that are different. Uh, and they cut a lot of that stuff. Or talk around it. Um, but yeah. I do think the Yamcha is so freaked out by girls thing still works. Uh, I think it's a, still a very funny uh, element of that show. Is how freaked out he is about women. Uh, when he, you know, and like, I mean, there's a point where Yamcha is fucking stronger than Goku. Certainly stronger than Goku. Uh, Wolf Fang Fist is really effective. And like, he's only say Goku's only saved because Bulma like shows up. Like, I still think that stuff plays, but a lot of the sexual jokes in, in Dragon Ball don't hold up. I think once you get to the World Tournament, a lot of that is fucking great. Uh, Harold edited three podcasts tonight. Hell yeah. Um, they they do throw that... Yeah, they do throw that away. You're not wrong. Um, they make an attempt at a redemption arc, which I appreciate. But yeah, they do, they do throw that shit away. Uh... Uh, cooties are lethal. Growing up, I really loved Tien and Yamcha because they're cool, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is, like, I mean, Tien, Tien was, like, rough and, like, you know, I mean, like, Yamcha's the first villain that becomes friends in that show. And there are many, many more Throughout the course of the era, obviously, it is a cliche. Piccolo is, like, Piccolo Jr., or as we call Piccolo, uh, clearly. But, like, Chiaotzu is a fucking asshole because he's got abilities that no one else has. So he's, like, he's a real ass to everybody. And, like... It's really annoying. It's really tough. He's really hard to deal with. Because he can fly. Nobody else can fucking fl He can fly and he has hypnosis powers. F like, when he, when he shows up, it fucking, like, Krillin gets so, so fucking, like, bamboozled. Like, Chaozu is, is a real dick. Uh, but he's just doing it because he wants Tien to, to do well. Yeah, and, and Tien is, like, kind of an ass. But it, it starts the, uh, you know, Yamcha's the beginning of the arc of get beat by Goku, he keep hanging out. All right, well, this is pretty cool. I guess I'll, we'll be friends. Okay. 
uh, early Krillin is a big old tick, which is is really interesting to me because obviously Krillin goes to get trained by Master Roshi because he's been bullied by the monks that he was training with. But as soon as he thinks there's someone lesser than him, he acts like a a, a big dick. Yeah, he acts like an asshole. Uh because he suddenly thinks that he's like got this, you know, dummy that he can kind of push around because he's been pushed around so much. It's classic. Uh and I didn't really pick up on that because it's not till they get to the tournament and he's like so nervous about those dudes that you're like, Oh, huh. Cause you like Krillin by that point. You know, he kind of cheats in a race and he's he's really thinks that he's got the edge over Goku is like a you know a bumpkin, uh, and then he's like kind of bewildered by how nice Goku is to him, which is you know always that that's Goku's thing. But yeah, it's uh all right. So we're gonna do two more of these, and then we'll do one more of that. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean because he's been bullied. And he suddenly thinks he has the advantage. Uh, <laughs> he thinks his shit don't stink because of no nose. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just because he's got a complex. Because he's been bullied by folks that are stronger than him. It's classic. It's not, uh, you know, not defending his behavior. But it is... Under, I do understand where it's coming from. Uh, he does have the white boy complex. You're not wrong, Bl Brown Lantern. Um, you're not wrong at all. Oh, uh, all right. So, very little anime to talk about right now because most of the shows are ending. New seasons coming out. We'll talk about some stuff that I'm excited about more next week as we get closer to new anime. But I do want to say... Episode 14 of Cells at Work, which is a special that aired on the 26th. It's just more good Cells at Work. It's it's not my favorite episode by any stretch, but it's a good episode. And it's more Cells at Work, which, as you know, I really fucking like. It's my third favorite show of the year. Uh, and so I recommend it. If you like Cells at Work, you will also like this episode of Cells at Work. This has been my talk about Cells at Work. Um, yeah, it's a good show. And it was a good episode. I really dug it. Um, big fan of that. And then I'm slowly going through Gridman uh, because a friend of mine was like, hey, you know that thing that you're like, oh, when's this shoe going to drop? It does drop, but like, it's good. And I was like, okay. Like, I'm not going to say what it is, but, like, you know, okay. It's like, all right. Like, it's worth watching. The reveal of what's going on is is worth engaging with. And I was like, okay. Uh, and I and I agree. It's, it is it's still a very interesting show that I am uh, I'm happy to be slowly catching up on. Uh, that is a show that I, I'm going to try to watch more of in the coming week. Uh, especially because I'm not working on Monday or Tuesday, so. Uh, I'm up to the last episode. Yeah, uh, I really like it. I think it's a really cool show. It just, there were so many shows coming out that it didn't, you know, it didn't make my uh, must-watch list because I was watching, you know, I'm still going to be watching because uh, it's a double order, so I still have plenty episodes of that time I got reincarnated as Slime, but I was watching that. I was watching... Um, uh, um, Ms. Vampire Who Loses in My Neighborhood. I was watching uh, uh, my second favorite show of the year, Skull Face Bookseller Honda-san. Um, and there were a few other things. You know, and for a good portion of that time, I was also, you know, watching As Ms. BL's Above Likes, which I eventually stopped watching because it just, there were a couple episodes that I was really like, nope. No thanks. Not interested. So yeah. So Gridman is on the top of my list of things to catch up on as we go into the next year. Uh, 
Mother's Basement really situated. It's uh, Trigger's best series. Yeah, I, I'm liking it. Uh, yeah, Goblin Slayer, I heard really good things about the last couple episodes um, that it's very obviously very grim, dark, and a lot, and they didn't include the viewer discretion thing when it aired. So a lot of people were like, oh, cool. And it was like, what the fuck? So that caught people off guard and they were not pleased about it. Um, and so I'll like, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever actually watch more than the first episode of that, but I did not really enjoy the first episode at all. Um, I like the idea that people don't have like names. They just have like descriptors. I think that's a, actually a cool choice, but overall not into it. Um, so I, I looked at some anime stuff that's coming out soon. Uh, I will be, of course, watching... Not of course, but... I will be watching um, Mob Psycho uh, Season 2. Excited about that. One Punch Man Season 2. Excited about that. Uh, I've heard mixed things about Rise of the Shield, Shield Hero, but I will give it a shot. Because, uh, like I said, I have heard mixed things, and I think I want to try and check that out. Um, and... Um, Let's see. Oh, uh, Dororo? D-O-R-O-R-O. -R -O -R -O. It is... Uh, there has been, There was a PlayStation 2 game that was called Dororo, but in the U.S. it was called Blood Will Tell. And the concept is that a man sells uh, actual, like, parts, like, body parts of his son to 48 demons. And... The show is his son trying to get those parts back. And a lot of those parts are replaced by, like, mechanical parts or swords. And it was a PS2 game that I definitely played. And I was like, yeah, all right, I'm going to check that shit out. Um, Board says, very hyped for one punch. I've read the manga, but still want to see the action. Hell yeah. Uh, and then... Um, yeah, Rise of the Shearholder, not too sure about... Oh, and then fruit bas Fruits Basket. There's an S. Fruits Basket. I remember really liking Fruits Basket when it first came out. This is a remake of Fruits Basket. Um, there's something very interesting about this kind of like taking the idea of the Chinese Zodiac and how these people, when they're touched by the opposite sex or... Uh, uh, are stressed out or weak can change. They, they transform into the animal. Uh, and the dynamics of this like family, which is like loose blood. And the fact that someone is born as a cat. Meanwhile, there's also a girl who's an orphan who gets kind of like, uh, not, uh, let stay in the family. And there's some romance stuff. And it's really interesting. And I really liked the first fruit baskets. So I'm interested in seeing what they do with a new show. I think that could be very cool. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but I'm I'm interested. All right, so we got more of our gear dose here. I think we're not going to we we'll probably finish this up. We're not going to get started on uh uh our uh, Garmadon, but we'll we'll get close to to doing it. Um but uh this Gyarados is fun. It's a lot of the same kind of pieces, which is not terrible because it means that we were able to talk about stuff. But yeah, that's the anime stuff I'm excited for next year. Um, I might give Radiant another try. Uh, I kind of fell off of it. But as the characters are starting to be introduced themselves, there's some other characters that seem kind of cool. I don't know. I guess I just wasn't, you know, I don't know. I wasn't willing to, to watch them get better at it, which is the problem with Shonen, right? One of the things about Shonen is like, you know, I've been talking about how Black Clover is getting pretty good, but if you, like, it's not getting very good if you start from the beginning, right? Because you got to watch people get better at stuff. I do know that soon, uh, the Whisper guy, the Whisper Marilyn Manson guy, gets to do some shit, which is great, because... 
I like a good jokey character, like the guy who whispers and no one is really hearing him. And that's kind of his thing. But also, like, it will be cool if he gets to do some shit. And it sounds like he gets to do some shit. I'm excited about that. Because, yeah, I like when a jokey character has to kind of, like, pull their weight. That's some good shit. So I'll be interested to see how that works out for that guy. Uh, at some point, board, there will be laid back camp season two. That is true. I don't know. I don't have details on that, but I know that's coming. And I am excited for laid back camp. That is my anime of 2018. That is my favorite anime of the year. Uh, I did my list. It's on my Twitter. You can go back and look at that. Uh, my top 10 is not super surprising um it was a good year for anime and the fact that there are two shows in my top 10 list that came out this season just goes to show how good this season was that's of course the time i got reincarnated as a slime and uh uh skull facebook seller honda san those are both quality titles it was bittersweet to watch the last episode of of uh, Skull Face Bookseller Honda San. I really, really love that show. I hope there's more of it. Um, I think it's like just a really great story. You know, in short and fun. I just think like it's such a good time. I had such a good time with that show that I, I do hope that there's uh, more of it. And I hope you'll check it out. I think you will. I mean, I mean, you don't have to, certainly, but I like to think that people listen to my anime recommendations and at least give it a shot. I know some people aren't super into uh, the genre. Like, I would love if people watch Slow Start because I think people didn't watch it this year. It seems to have not done very well in Japan, which is a shame because I think it's a really fun show. I mean... It's a show that has the voice actress for Kana from Dragon Maid doing another young girl. It's very queer and very fun and very positive and life affirming. Um, so I, I would, I would definitely recommend it to people. Oops, so this is supposed to be. Oops, fucking this up. This goes like that. So that goes. And then this goes on this. And then that goes on the bottom there. Great. Um, Pat, did you ever watch My Neighbor uh, Sekai-kun? Uh, yes. I'm going to I'm gonna refresh my memory about that. I definitely checked that show out. Let me just double check again. Yeah. Uh, the Master of Killing Time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I like that show. It was pretty fun. You know, nice little gag thing. Is uh, it's kind of fun. Like, I think that the it, it maybe it wore a little thin, but it was fun. Uh. Yeah, board. I've heard good things about Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl. Uh, what what the fuck is up with Winter? Winter had so let's say them. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Skullface bookseller Honda San. Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl. Uh, Ms. Vampire Who Lives in My Neighborhood. As Ms. Beelzebub likes. The season before had things like Harano. And like, this is, I mean, I also, like I said, also on my list was uh, How to Keep a Mummy, which is a fun name for a show. And then also, not on my list, because overall it is not a great show, How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. But at least that show is descriptive positively. Um... So really weird long titles uh, this season, in particular. But yeah, I've heard good things uh, about that show. 
Um, for some reason, I thought it was going to be psychological, and it's not. And I don't know why I thought it was. Um, any albums I really enjoyed this year? Uh, I gotta check my Google Music. Um, I'm gonna take a look at my Google Music. This year, um, I'm gonna look up the name of it. It was uh, um, Big Frida put out a um, a five uh, song EP that came out. Uh, uh, Third Wave Bounce, yeah. Um, Big Frida's album was really good. Uh, I thought Pray for the Wicked, Panic at the Disco's album this year was was solid. Um, it's it wasn't as strong on the first listen, but it really fucking grew on me and eventually I really liked it um let's see uh what else came out this year uh I'm gonna just kind of briefly I'm just looking at album like my playlist uh everybody dies was pretty good from logic uh I thought I thought invasion of privacy Cardi B fucking lots of great bangers there um yeah uh, so here's a weird one. Cher's album of ABBA covers. There are some great covers in that. There are some not so great covers in that, but there are many excellent ones. Um, let's see. Just looking through. Um, let's go down to here. That's. AFI's album was okay. Um, Carousel Kings had some good stuff. Um, yeah, there's a few. There's a f few things that came out. Um, sorry, I'm just like looking at some music now, not building. I gotta go back to building. Yeah, overall, I uh, okay. Uh, I'll say this. Um. I enjoyed, uh, let's see, uh, Chromio put out a really solid album. Nobody talks about Chromio. Chromio's still putting out good music. Maybe the, maybe if you listen to Chromio, you wouldn't know what album you were listening to because it's similar, but this one was really good. Lots of good jams. Um, uh, there's a song called Room Service that I think is a really fun, positive uh, sex song. Um that I like. Uh, my mom grew up a huge ABBA fan. I guess they were popular in India or some shit. So I grew up with ABBA tapes and CDs in the car. I, was, I mean, I love ABBA. Like, it's not. Uh, um, so, uh, so Cher just put out a, 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 a whole thing of ABBA. Um, I'm going to look at it right real quick. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I think Fernando is pretty good. Um, I don't think her cover of SOS is that good, but I think most of it is just really fun. I think her cover of Waterloo is just great. Cher has a fucking awesome voice. So her singing Waterloo is really fun. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't particularly love the SOS cover because I love that song so much that I think it didn't need to be covered in chair style. That's just my opinion on it. Uh, someone else renewed their um, subscription, but I don't know who did it. Uh, thank you for doing that. Um, if you want, if the notification thing will pop up, feel free to pop that in so we can see. But thank you. ABBA is great. Oh, I've been a fan for, for a number of years. I think SOS is one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, I am annoyed that Take a Chance on Me isn't currently in Twitch Things, which I haven't checked in since I, I got back from uh, my uh, vacation. I should check out. I should check it out and see if there's an, what songs have been added to Twitch Things. I might. I don't think I'm going to sing any on Monday, but I'll probably do another Twitch Things stream at some point. Waterloo might be one of the best Eurovision songs ever. I don't disagree with you. Uh, my dad is an 8-track player in his car, and it was all Neil Diamond all the time. I would have preferred ABBA. Yeah, I think there's something to appreciate about 
uh, Neil Diamond, but I think I would probably get a little sick of Neil Diamond after a while. All right, so I got to find the other one that looks like this. I don't have a lot of pieces left, so it shouldn't be hard to find the piece I need, but sometimes you just can't find the piece you're looking for. It's this one. Hmm. Nope, nope, and nope. Now the question is, did I put one of these on somewhere and it was supposed to be one of these? Because I am missing one. That is frustrating. Let's move everything around. These are all like that. Those are all there. Yeah, I am currently missing a piece I need. And my thought is that I might have put on one of these. Maybe it's this one. Maybe that's what it is. I think that's it. Yes, this is this is wrong. Figured it out. Figured it out, folks. Figured out what I did wrong. Oh, it's so nice when you figure out what you did wrong and you can be like, oh, no, that's wrong. It's just a good feeling. Also, we caught it really early. Uh, my mom said that when her and my dad met in the 80s and they were fresh, uh, uh, she used to always saying take a chance on me now. Huh? It is, a, it is a great song. Take a chance, take a chance. Just a good tune. Just a good quality tune. Uh, and uh, Gimme, 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 uh, in parentheses, A Man After Midnight is also a great song. I think that is an under appreciated Abitune. It is a uh, probably best known for being uh, the song sampled in Madonna's Array of Lights. It's that doo -doo 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 synth part, but uh, I think it's a great song. All right. So Uh, take a chance of me will always make me think of my baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old, uh, from the best of episodes. You're not wrong, Harold. I did this like 10 times and I'm still like being weird about it. I don't know why. This one step is just feels weird to me. Strange. Nope, just doing it wrong. There we go. Yeah, we're going to go right to 11 tonight. Uh, thank you very much for hanging out um, and watching the stream. We will, uh, we will either finish this or get very close to finish this, and then on Thursday we'll pick things up. Uh, I do want to remind you that on Monday... At 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm ringing in the year, new year by playing games with the chat. I will start with playing uh, a couple games that are just, you know, me doing it. And then I will jump in to playing some stuff that uh, I can play with the chat. You know, some uh, Jackbox games. We'll get some Quiplash going. Uh, maybe, we'll do, maybe we'll do a TKO. It's been a long time since we did TKO. But it'll be a three-hour stream at least. We'll go into the new year. On the East Coast, ringing the new year. So I hope that at least some of y'all will be able to pop in for that. And then, all right, so we got to do some weird stuff here. I think this is the tail, I think. I don't know. Gyarados is looking pretty cool. Can't wait to put it all together. Then we gotta do another one of these. And some of these. Ugh. 
I'm going back to work tomorrow. I have not been to work in a while. So that is, uh, I'm happy to do it. Because like I said, I have not been there in a bit. So it'll be good to be back. And then I have Monday and Tuesday off. And then I go back to work again on Wednesday. It's a weird little thing. I took two days off, so I haven't been in in a while. But I am happy to go back. All right, uh, now I'm, I am again missing a piece that I need, which means that I put one of these on somewhere where it was supposed to be one of these. I don't know where. I think it was this one. Yeah, that's probably it. I just wasn't paying attention. Yep, that's right. Great. So this goes on like this. And then there. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. Really appreciate it. We are getting towards the end of our stream here. Not lo much left to build here. We do have a little bit left to build here. We're going to build the tail. Eventually we put all the sections together. I might go over tonight. I might just finish this up tonight and go a little longer if you all hang out, if people are not in a rush. Uh, also, as always, feel free to come and go, folks. Some people are. I think we got up to 20 views today, which was nice. Um, plenty of chatters tonight, which was all, it's always great. I always appreciate that when folks want to talk because, uh, especially as you know, when it gets into um, Saturday, I sometimes run out of things to talk about from Thursday. But, you know, end of the year, we got some time to chat about things. So I always appreciate when folks have things they want to talk about uh, or write about and let me talk and go on a rant or two. We got some good ranting in today. So go us. Just building the tail here. A fun kit. Not my favorite uh, built, but there's some fun to it. It all kind of makes sense. It snaps together well. We got our wings here. More wings. So going to be our tail wings on this. Put those, pop those on. And then pop a piece on top of that. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't really listen to a lot of music tonight. Uh, Too Mellow uh, put out some cool stuff. Um, I would uh, I would check out his uh, drum and bass album he put out this year. I think that was pretty stellar. Um, uh, Open Mike Eagle put out some fucking really thoughtful music this year, as always. Yeah. Uh, I think he gets a bad rap as being uh, like a comedy rapper, and he's certainly not. He's just a nerdy dude that likes wrestling and a lot of nerdy shit, and I think he gets pigeonholed. Um, but yeah, Open Mike Eagle put out some fucking really thoughtful shit this year, so I would recommend that. Uh, yeah, OME, yeah, it's really great. Uh, the plan is to clean my kitchen whenever the stream ends, but I have a dog on my lap, so I won't complain if that gets delayed out. Well, Asmo, that's awesome. I love that you're watching with a dog. That makes me very happy to hear. Also, hello. Um, welcoming. All right, so we got to put that there. Okay, great. Most of the time, this makes total sense occasionally it is a little odd but for the most part all right that works just building our tail here and we got to build the platform for it but yeah i think i'll go a little past 11 uh Ultron says, I've been slowly building a 100-scale V2 assault Gundam at work when it isn't busy at the front desk. That's awesome, Ultron. 
Find the time to get the building going, you know? Do it when you can. Totally respect that. You know, sometimes you got plenty of time for stuff at home. Sometimes you you, you make the time when you can. Uh, totally understand that. I mean, part of this is allowing me the time to build model kits by making it a job. I really like this job, but it is, you know, it is making it making the time by saying, oh, well, I do this on these days. I spend four hours a week building model kits. That's what I do. That means that I have time to four days a week. I'll build model kits. Pretty good. All right. Let's put that on there. That's that. All right. It's time to time to section some of these here. So we'll do this as the tail into one of these, into one of these, into one of these, or two of these. I'll do it so you can see. Whoops. A lot of movement allowed in this Gyarados, which is cool. It's very fun. I appreciate that. As it is just a, you know, a dragon-ish looking thing. And that allows for that, which is very cool. All right, so that's all those pieces together. Two more on there. Then this goes here. And this goes here. When I box this, I'm probably going to have to separate the sections, but it won't be too hard to, like, you know, separate them out. And then the head goes here. All right, now we'll build our base. But this is the Gyarados. This is what Gyarados looks like. Hell yeah, Gyarados. Kind of play around with a little bit. Obviously, without the base, you can't really do a lot with with it, but you can add some some movement to it. Kind of mix it up. And then we'll build a base for it. Uh, I got a mess of Legos for Xmas and got some of the Speed Champions kits. They're interesting. Oh, that's cool. Playing Sentinels of the Multiverse card game while watching the stream, so longer is fine. That sounds good. Um, oh, that's awesome. All right, so now we're, uh, we're going to build our bases here. Like I said, we won't go too much over, but we'll go a little over. So we got to line these up right. This goes like, so that we can, hmm. I don't know how this goes. Actually, don't know how this goes. Okay, so it goes like that. With that piece. That piece goes like no. Like that. Yes. Okay. So that's that. I'll push this aside a little bit so we can see what I'm doing here. Goes there. And then we need. So we got these clear pieces, which you can see. There. We're pretty cool looking. Um, as we put together this, it's pretty ingenious how these, the, the base snaps together. So you can remove it if you want. It looks like one big piece, but if you want to pull those off, you certainly can. And just adds a lot of cool water dimensions to it. I think it's really, really nice. Some of my favorite parts of these kits are, uh, the bases. Cause I think they're just really neat looking. Oops. Oh, lost one. We did lose one piece, but hopefully we have extra of these. And if not, it's okay. I can go find it. It's not that hard. It won't be too hard to find that piece that I just shoved away. And then that goes like this. Um, oh, Robot Crank, hello and welcome. Throwing the Bear Cave emote in there. Appreciate that. I also need more space. I have the complete series of Lego architecture and displaying it all is a big effort. Sin, I totally understand. 
Uh, I wish I could display more stuff. I am thinking about getting some kind of display case for more of my kits that I'm keeping because I, you know, do have some of them that I'm not going to part with. So, all right. Goes like that. That one goes here. Once again, it's really nice to have this color coded stuff to kind of see where these pieces need to go. And that goes like that. And if I screw any of this up, it'll be easy to fix these pieces here. Uh, goes like that. And then that goes like that. Great. Building our base out. And then we're going to put on clear stuff. I really like the different colors here from our see-through pieces. I think it's really nice looking. Um, I think it's going to add a lot to the to this kit to have those pieces like that. Yeah, that looks neat. Really does look like different kinds of uh, of water. That's that pretty cool. I'll be interested to see how Gyarados sits in all of this. I'm not... I didn't look ahead, so I'm not sure. Oh, there should be a space in between. So this is actually off. Hmm. Will I be able to pop that out? Yes. Yep. Not too many mistakes on this one, but luckily they've been pretty easy to fix if I've had them. So pleased about that at least. You know, the camera's going to have a little trouble with all these, all this blue, this light blue. Probably having a little trouble seeing it. And that. Um, yeah, so I hope folks will join me on Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to keep going here. We're going to finish this off. Uh, love having a kit like this that takes the whole stream. That's awesome. Um, and then we will start. On Thursday, this bad boy right here. Look at that shark. Look at that land shark. And that hot dog cart. And that hot dog minifig. And those two hot dogs. And yeah, that's that's real dumb. This thing is so expensive. It finally came down in price. That was $80. And it's 830 pieces. Uh, but that was like for a long time. That was over $120 uh, on, on Amazon. It was an Amazon exclusive. And that was $120 for a really long time. It came down to $80. I used two gift cards and then my own money, well, money from the streams, um, towards to put towards that. And it's money well, well spent, certainly. But dang, it's a lot of money. That shark is so cool and hot dog cart is so confusing. I assume that it's just like attacking a city or like, attacking a pier so they had a hot dog cart that's my assumption i don't know but it is great and weird and i love a, something like that that's great and weird sometimes that's fantastic but yeah it looks so cool it's been on my wish list for most of 2018 so i'm happy to finally get it uh board says uh, I will miss Monday going to a friend's for New Year's Eve to play some card and board games. Sits a bunch of tables. About 15 to 20 folks show up. Board. That sounds fucking rad. Well, I'm glad you got that. That's going to be really cool. Um, good for you. That sounds very, very good. Um, yeah, I didn't have any plans, and I was trying to figure out when to do my monthly bonus game stream, and I thought about doing it during the day on Monday, and I was like, well, I'm not working Monday night, so there's no... Law says my bonus game stream has to be during the day. What if I did it at night? And what if that's how I rang in the new year? Because I don't have New Year's plans. Uh, and I think it's going to be fun. But yeah, if people can't make it, they can't make it. And I get that. 
No hard feelings about that, by any means. All right, I gotta make some wave things here. One of these, one of these wave things. These things. I made a lot of this when we were making our, like fire Pokemon. Use these things a lot. And then clear piece, clear piece. Uh, as I said, I don't technically have Monday off, but no one in corporate America is really working on Monday, so I kind of have Monday off. I understand. Yeah, um, it's really just like people would go to a New Year's Eve thing at a comedy theater, but I was considering doing Monday night, but I decided to do an afternoon stream instead. That's cool, Harold. Uh, make sure you, you post that um, about that in the uh, Discord so people know. Um, but yeah, I... Um, I'm going to give it a shot. Even if we don't get a, a huge turnout, I think there'll be some people that suddenly need something to do. Maybe we'll get some people that aren't uh, normally w watchers that are just like looking for something to uh, to do on a Monday night that suddenly didn't have plans. Follow my Twitter or something. Want to check it out. I uh, definitely had somebody tweet or uh, comment on my, uh, my build stream on my top 10 list, they didn't know I streamed, so I hope they checked it out. Because I'm sure there are you know, plenty of people out there that know what I do and, and like the stuff and don't know that I do build streams. They just think I, you know, they don't know. And we got to get the word out. Yes, sin. I think I think um, that was that was probably when I was like trying to do some bits, maybe for his extra life, where I was I was doing photo stuff. Um, that could be it. But yeah, uh, I think a few folks, you know, follow me on Twitter or have followed me before and just didn't know I did this because there's so much going on on the internet. So I understand that you can't know everything about everybody. Um, which I get, yeah. But I'm glad that people have been able to uh, check out what I've been up to. And I hope that they... Uh, I hope they like the streams. You know, I hope everybody has a good time on these. I know that plenty of folks have reached out about, you know, they've started... Uh, building at home over the years because they've been encouraged by me, which is awesome. I love hearing about that. That's that's very cool. Um, yeah. I like to think that I've been helpful in encouraging folks to check out uh, to try it. Because I, I love building stuff so much. Uh, Aladdin's Will Smith uh, for other card game nerds like me, Casey Malone has been streaming Magic Arena on Mondays too. Pretty informative for last player. Yeah, I, I have I've yet to check out any of Casey's streams. Um, I think that's awesome that he's doing it. I just haven't had the chance to check it out. He's usually streaming when I'm working, so I'm unfortunately not been able to to do it. But it is cool that he's doing that. All right, we got the Pokeball right here. You might need a Master Ball for this Gyarados, but probably not. You probably wouldn't use it on that. And then how it connects is kind of goes up. And then this one is the one that locks in like this. Oh, that's a cool spot. It locks in like that. And then you can, oops, kind of hang out. Get some height on it. Look at that thing. Hell yeah. Uh, that's awesome. This thing is very cool looking. And that's it. Um, that is our Gyarados. Very cool kit. Um, thank you, Ultron, 
for picking this up off my wish list. Uh, I think that's rad as hell. It looks so cool. Um, got a few extra pieces that so we'll put away. But yeah, we went a little over to finish that up. And uh, we will work on our, uh, our shark, robot shark. Uh, next Thursday, but as I said, my next stream will be Monday. My monthly bonus game stream will be on Monday where we will uh, play a bunch of games into the new year. And we will start 2019 right. Uh, I do have to figure out how to do a countdown in the Twitch stream, in the, like a countdown thing in OBS. I know there's a way to do it. I got to figure that out. But thank you all for hanging out. Um... And we will get to um, uh, our next you know, build soon. But that's it. That's going to do it. Uh, went a little over. Uh, and I will see you. Uh, go uh, if, if uh, let's see, if, if Kate is streaming right now. Let me see what's going on. Uh, yeah, Kate Stark is playing House Flipper. That's how I found about it. So go to uh, twitch.tv slash Kate slash Kate. Check that out uh, if you still want to watch some stuff and see a good you know, some good content on the internet. Otherwise, bye-bye. Thank you. See you.